All right, so I'm here today with Nicole Randall. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Absolutely. Good, because that's important for interviews. That's where we got to start, right? <laughs> and then um, we haven't done any prep for this, and we did that on purpose, right? Yep. And you said that you've done interviews recently. Who did you do those for? Um, I just did one for a magazine, and it sounds really bad, but I can't remember the name right now. <laughs> but um, it was cool. I They sent me some stuff. Uh, it was all scripted. You know, uh, they wanted to make sure that I was okay with the questions, and it was all acting stuff, and that's, sure. that's good. I just did one, a video interview on camera for a Tony Topaz video magazine, um, and that was on camera. And that was really cool. Again, they were scripted. Um, and so it was like the same thing in each one. So I felt unscripted be a little bit more fun. So you're you're making the web rounds for magazines you won't soon remember. All right. Absolutely. So <laughs> I, I have to stand out somehow as one you'll remember. I got to remember that. Okay. So tell me about, let's get the, the standard stuff out of the way really quick. Like the questions anybody would ask you who's really boring. Okay. Then we'll go into fun stuff. Okay. Deal? Rock. All right. What are the projects that you're working on to further your acting career what do you what have you been doing uh doing anything that actors normally do i mean i'm really picky right now on the roles i get and um i just when i read i read lots of scripts and what i want is the scripts to really jump out and i want them to move me um, when i read something i want it i want to be able to breathe life into that character and i feel like a lot of things that get sent to me are not doing that <laughs> so okay. I, I go through them you know and um whatever one that i can't put down that's the one that I'm really going to go after. Um, okay. And luckily, those have been the roles that I've been getting lately, so that's been really cool. Okay, so I, I'm going to have to ask a question right off the bat because I would have scripted this question, but we're not scripted, so I'll, okay. just, I'll just ask it. You are incredibly beautiful, as anyone watching or looking at your pictures would, would see. How often do you have to decline roles of a, of a more vulgar nature? Thank you for asking that. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I probably get 10 a day. And, uh -huh. you know, they don't know me, you know, they're just going off my pictures and stuff and I can't really blame them. It's just the nature of the industry. Um, I don't do any of that and I'm really, really uh, conservative in that mm -hmm. sense. And so pictures can be deceiving in that sense. Um, but, you know, I don't get mad or anything. They, they don't know, you know, and I email yeah. them back and I'm like, sorry, I don't do this, this and this. And they're like, all right, bye. <laughs> so. No, that's that's good. Um, let's see. So you're going around that and I want to, I want to bring up, I'm, I could bring it up on the monitor behind us, but for people that are, are watching this on YouTube, I want to bring up these commercials that you did. Cause they're another reason why I think you might get this stereotype attention. I don't, I don't know how to phrase it correctly. Casting. Yeah. And I'm talking about the Ribalizer commercials. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about those? Do you know? I, I get the sense you might know the person personally who owns the business or something, or was it just contracted work? Or You know, it's really interesting. Um, usually I, I send everybody through my manager or my agent. That way I don't have to deal with it. Um, they kind of filter it out, and then they send me scripts. This person, though, actually knew me, and it was on Facebook, and um, he was the co-writer with it. And he wrote me, and he said, hey, we're doing a project. We would really want to write it around you. And... Um, I was, I was like, okay, well, send me what you got, you know. So he did, and um, I didn't like the first script. I, I okay. thought it was a little too risque for me. <laughs> um, but, like, again, it wasn't like I was – it's not that I'm embarrassed to do certain things like that. It's just I have these morals that I won't uh, – I don't know. I won't cross, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, they were really, really cool about it. They actually rewrote their script for me. And um, I didn't think they would, thought they were going to kick me off and be like, okay, next, you know, they rewrote yeah. it and they were like, no, we want you um, to be in, we want you to be this girl. And they were so nice. And I remember being on set and they're going to show the bloopers, which is going to be really embarrassing. <laughs> um, it, it, I don't know. It was just so much fun. Um, but I didn't know them personally, but it was so much fun because I never had to eat on camera for 10 hours <laughs> oh and wow we really had to do that we did um 14 commercials in two days um but everybody was so cool and um we had so much fun and we were laughing and goofing off the entire time uh in between takes but it was hard um i remember i had to do one like eight takes which is big for me because i usually nail my takes within one or two and then i'm done but it was hard for me to be that sex symbol that they were looking for um yeah. not that i can't do that but when you're putting that out there to the world it's it's a whole other animal, you know, um, especially the one where I had to pour milk on myself. <laughs> that was the 
one, I had to do eight takes because I was like, this is dumb, guys. Come on, you know. Yeah. They're like, no, it sells, it sells. Let's do it. I'm like, all right. Um, but it was fun, you know, and they're innocent. And um, I'm fully clothed, and I felt all right about it. It it felt a lot more tasteful in a certain um, Carl's Cheeseburger commercial with a person I won't name. It, <laughs> it was way more classy than that. Right? And it was like a... It was like a joking poke at sexuality without being dirty and nasty right. like the cheeseburger commercial. Very cool. All right, so you're the, you're working on uh, different projects, and, and you kind of went over those kind of just roles that you really believe in and things like that. How How is the road of becoming an actress or, you know, obviously you're doing acting now, but how is the road going for you? How do you feel like it is, or what do you feel like the struggles are? Uh, there's struggles every day. I mean, I'm a working actor, so knock on wood, I'm really lucky. Um, but I'm not even where I want to be yet. And I know that sounds weird because it seems like I'm doing stuff all the time. But it's it's I've been almost 10 years into this industry, um, and it's not been easy, you know. And all my friends who are in it, it's a struggle every single day. And you really have to get used to rejection. I, if I could tell anybody anything, you have to have thick skin. Um, if you don't, you're, they're going to eat you alive, you know. Yeah. Um, but you just you get over it, you know, and you go on to the next one. And luckily, there's auditions every day, you know. So you just, I don't know, you just move on. <laughs> so how do you, how would you say is it is it hard to to commingle the two of taking roles you only believe in and mixing that with the rejection and then thinking, God, if I pass something up, maybe this will be the month I don't work or. I don't look at it like that. Um, in fact, I just read something online and it said actors shouldn't take breaks. And um, what they're meaning is sometimes actors get so frustrated that they'll actually take like a two month break off. I I've never done that. Um, I don't know. I just don't see it like that. I feel like each project you're blessed to be on, you know, you're yeah. lucky to be on. So I don't, I feel so humbled that I got the project. I'm not even like, I'm not even thinking like, okay, two months, I'm going to be working in two months. I'm like, hope to God I'm going to be working in two months. Sure. You know? But, so. but that's what I mean with the, with the, with the hope to God I'm working in two months, does it make it harder to turn down roles when you when you feasibly might need money or need to be acting, or um, do you no. still have the? Well, it it depends on who you are and what you do, I guess. Um, I made sure that I had a career to fall back on. Um, so I mean, this isn't my only way to for compensation, but it is sure. for a lot of people. I mean, I know people who uh, live in their cars in L.A. You know, just trying to make it. That's not me, yeah. thank goodness, but. Uh, my parents always told me, get a career. If you're going to do this, have something to fall back on. And so I did. Um, but it is hard. Um, and it's stressful. One, one of my favorite Hollywood stories is Jewel because she lived in her car. Yeah. And, like, she wasn't even she wasn't even trying to make it in music but ended up making it just out of some fluke. And it it's very true. And I think... I think Hollywood might be responsible in a way for a lot of people navigating their way. Like, doves, they all go there thinking they'll, like... Um, be able to make it just in going there we're getting a problem thing and i hope <laughs> it's like all busts up in the back end too okay are you there nicole hey what's going on this is dr john from triple x radio and today you're going to be hearing an interview coming right up after this message from nicole a randall she is just an awesome actor, and uh, I had the pleasure of doing an interview with her, and unfortunately, there's a program called Pamela, and uh, it's a PC recording for Skype, and it just completely crashed on the whole interview, and then we booted back up, and we thought we were recording, and Pamela said it was recording, and then it let go of the last 38 minutes of that too, so... Nicole's really cool and laid back. I'm sure she'll come on again and we'll do a redo we were even talking about t tonight. But um, what follows is the nine minutes that Pamela was gracious enough to record. I can tell you going forward, probably not going to use Pamela for recording needs anymore. But um, the, the interview was very, very cool. And uh, if you're looking to get more information on Nicole Randall, who has just some awesome commercials and different projects she's working on. The commercials are already out. They're extremely funny and innovative. Um, you can go to www.imdb.com. You'll find her over there. And uh, if you are someone trying to look up, you know, and get in touch with her about a project, you can reach her agent at uh, 214-699-6621. Now what follows will be the partial interview, and I'll come on afterwards and do a little recap too.